I'm on the campus of beautiful Gettysburg College for History Meets the Arts, uh, which is put on by Lord Nelson's Gallery. So let's go inside. Well, here we are on the floor of History Meets the Arts, put on by Lord Nelson's Gallery. Let's see what we've got. Uh, as you'd expect from Lord Nelson's Gallery, there's a great deal of visual art here, all around the edges of, of this venue. Find painters, there's really a fantastic selection of artists who specialize in art of the frontier or early American life. Um, around the walls you'd find art by David Wright, Robert Griffin, John Buxton, Pamela Patrick White, and a number of others. I mean just some absolutely top-notch artists uh, displaying their original work here and it's all for sale. Here's a look at just a few of the great paintings that were available around the walls of, uh, of the show. And sometimes you might even get a chance to watch the artist at work. Here's Jonathan Stasco uh, putting a little, a little paint on canvas right on the exhibition floor. But besides artists, uh, in the visual media, there are quite a few authors here. And uh, I'm over at, at Linda Gilmore's table, and she's written a book about an area I am very familiar with and very interested in, uh, basically Perry County and Juniata County, Pennsylvania, and the attacks there in the French and Indian War and during Pontiac's Rebellion. So I'll be taking that book home with me. You can guarantee that. Here's Linda with a copy of her book. I'm reading that book today, by the way, and I'm really enjoying it. Jeff Shara is another author that was at the event. Uh, Jeff is very well known for his historical novels on the Civil War and on World War II. So besides painters and authors, uh, there are artists that work in other media producing material culture items. Right, so I'm at the Fluke Brothers table and they've got some beautiful Central European style antler powder flasks. And this is something you really don't get to see every day. So let's take a look at one of these. Yeah, look at the detail on that. that beautiful work. Well, go ahead and tell me about this carving. Well, the, the carving should be on layers. If you really want to get a good depth, or a, field of depth, you, you know, your, your top layer of your flower, and then you've got a, the next layer of leaves, it's one more lower, and then another and lower, and it, it gives it more of a realistic, uh, like same way with your moon, you know, the flowers are up here, the moon's here, then the stars are a little deeper, then you can see once you get too deep, then it starts turning dark, uh -huh. you quit then before you get through too deep. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, that's all natural color too. It, it will patina. Okay, my name's Carol Ross. I've been asked to give us a short description of my Bit Boy boxes. Can you get that pretty good there? Oh yeah. We'll start with a smaller one here. Uh, in order to make these boxes, and these boxes do date back several hundred years. They were generally would be called Bentwood boxes or pantry boxes. I'll start. If you can look right there, you can see how thin that wood is. That's a piece of 1 16th inch veneer paint of wood. I use popper or maple, I use both kinds. I will cut it to the shape I want, give it a rough sanding job, then I have to boil that for about an hour and a half so that it will take the bend when I do it on the mold. I will bend it, then I put it on a piece of lead pipe about that big around. I call my clinch anvil. 
and I put some glue on this underside of the top. Then I tack it down with copper tacks. You can see inside there where the tacks are clenched over. That holds it together. I put spacers in on the top and bottom to hold it while it dries. And it can dry forever. And after a few days, it's ready to put the ready to put the band on. I cut this strip, go through the same process. I hold it itself. I shape that to the actual box itself. I'm over here at my friend Tim Grizz Sanner's table, and Tim is a phenomenal horn maker. Beautiful banded horn here. I'm here at Clay Smith's table. He is the master gunsmith at Williamsburg, Virginia. And if you've seen my other videos, you've seen Clay's work quite a bit. I think he's just phenomenal. And of course, he's getting very well known for these painted trade guns. And here are a couple of really gorgeous examples. Painted vine decorations. Very beautiful. I'm over here at Brad Fountain's table, and I'm actually working on an article on Brad right now from Muzzleloader Magazine. But Brad is uh, just a great rifle builder. Wayne Hyde's table, he does some fantastic sculpture. Some beautiful bronzes here. And this is really a spectacular piece. Some beautiful wooden boxes by South Mountain Folk Art. Just absolutely gorgeous Pennsylvania Dutch work. Part of the fun of coming to an event like this is that you can actually meet the artists in person, which is great. So in this picture, uh, we've got to the right, David Wright. And David is the Dean of Frontier Artists here in America. He is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, in the center is William Fluke, and he is a master carver. He's the one who made those uh, antler powder flasks that we were looking at earlier. And then on the left is David's charming wife, uh, Jane Wright. So you can meet most of the artists uh, here at some point during the day. Besides being one of the most talented painters in the country, uh, David Wright is also an outstanding photographer. And over the last three years, we've collaborated on, um, I guess, three or four articles. So it was really great to be able to see David and catch up and uh, chat with him and Jane. Well, that's it for this year's History Meets the Arts. But next year, if you're in the Gettysburg area in June, this is something you should put on your list. It's, it's really worth the trip. Of course, if you can't get to the History Meets the Arts event, uh, you can always go to Lord Nelson's Gallery, which is just off the square in downtown Gettysburg. And you can see a phenomenal display of art there. Um, but we sure would like to see you here. So maybe I'll see you next year when Lord Nelson's Gallery presents History Meets the Arts.